Hi everyone, it's Hannah Ross. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going through my entire tech collection and I just wanna let you guys know what I've got right off the bat. I have AirPods, I have an iPhone, and I have a MacBook Air, so a laptop. But before I dive deep and tell you all about those items, I first want to tell you guys that I am not a tech guru, so this isn't going to be necessarily about the specifications of these devices. It's going to be more from a minimalist perspective and how you can downsize your digital footprint. So I am going to be giving you minimalist tips and tricks along the way and also show you what's on my iPhone and what's on my laptop. This was my final hurdle to get over in minimalism. I found my digital clutter to be extremely overwhelming. It's the last thing I did. I had so many email addresses I wasn't keeping track of. I was signed up for every newsletter. I gave my email out to every store. My inbox was flooded with promotions. I had photos everywhere on all these devices, on multiple different apps and videos, like nothing was organized. And it was such a large task because I just was a hot mess when it came to my digital life. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it took me a really long time to get sorted and organized, but once it was done, then I started to create the systems and now it's almost on autopilot. If you guys are just starting off, I'm gonna have some tips for you. If you're well into your minimalism journey, there's definitely things for you to pick up here as well. And just know that minimalism looks different for everyone. So I might be suggesting some methods or some strategies to reduce either your digital clutter or the amount of devices that you have. But at the end of the day, it's all up to personal preference and personal needs. And this isn't one cookie cutter solution. So I have three quick tips before we get into the devices themselves. Number one is try not to have a device next to each other. What does that mean? So I feel like the evolution goes from cell phone to iPad to laptop to desktop computer. And I find a lot of those devices that are back to back provide similar functions. So if you, for instance, are considering getting an iPad, yet you have a perfectly functioning cell phone that provides the vast majority of things you would want to do, or if you have a laptop that also can perform the functions of that iPad, you might not need to go out and buy that extra device. Now, everyone's life is different. Maybe you need a desktop computer for your work at home, but try to think about your life. If you're someone who works at coffee shops a lot and you like to get out and you're always on the go, maybe a laptop is a much better solution than a desktop computer. And maybe just maybe you don't need both of those devices. And then tip number two is to stagger your devices. Again, what am I talking about? Okay. So try not to buy all of your technology at the same time with the same operating systems at the same year. Try to stagger your devices. That way you're gonna get a lot more out of your older devices. So let's say you have an old laptop, but a really new phone. There might be some things that you just can't do on your laptop anymore. It's probably good 99% of the time, but you might not be able to download uh, some software. Okay, so instead of getting rid of that laptop and replacing it right away, maybe go to your phone and see if you can perform that function on your phone as it's a newer device. At least personally, this one has been so beneficial over the years because I don't feel that need to go out and replace my devices every year, every few years. I let them go until their time is done, but there's always that backup. So if I really do desperately need to perform a function, I always have a device that can do it. Number three is a really simple one, but it's having the same brand for all your devices can be really beneficial. So not only is it just easier from a user perspective because they all function the same way, they all look the same way, they all feel the same way, so that's great. But it can also be much easier to transfer files. You get acquainted with their operating systems and software programs. So I find it definitely can be good to have all your devices be the same brand. So with those tips out of the way, let's start with our first device here. They are my AirPods. These are one of the best purchases I've ever made. Well, my husband actually bought them for me as a gift, but 
regardless they are so impactful in my life i love them obviously to play music it's so nice to not need your phone glued to your hip so that the cord can reach your ears it's nice to be able to have that little bit of distance but they're also really nice because this pro version has the noise cancellation setting so i'm someone who likes to you know just meditate on my own thoughts and every once in a while i just like to pop these in not play any music but just turn on the noise cancellation and eliminate that background sound and just be in the present moment these are probably the most impactful when i'm working out or in the gym there is nothing worse than having this cord like going everywhere tangling about when you're going for a run and having these be cordless is truly a luxury like it's nothing short of a luxury and i have thoroughly enjoyed having these little bad boys in my life all right now we are moving on to my iphone 6. this phone has a story as well this phone's been with me for quite a few years and it was actually something that i purchased off a friend years ago and she had used it for years so it is very old i actually think it's been doubled now if i'm not mistaken i think there's an iphone 13 out so it still performs really really well but i wouldn't be surprised if this is on you know kind of its last legs i think by clearing it out and deleting a lot of the applications and just having a really small amount of stuff on this phone it's helped its longevity but i've replaced the battery twice i've replaced the screen twice i think the next time something goes wrong with this one i might need to say goodbye and then say hello to a new phone so let's chat about what's actually on this iphone 6. first of all cute picture of me and my husband yeah we're just you know pondering the world, looking out into the ocean. I love it. And now moving on to the screen with all the applications, we're gonna start down here at the bottom. So this is my social row. I have a FaceTime app, just the regular calling, messaging, and then Facebook Messenger. This is the only social media that I have left. I don't have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, if there's anything else out there that I'm forgetting. I just decluttered that a while ago. It wasn't serving me anymore and I was finding I was spending a lot of time and mental energy on these applications. So I decluttered that, I digitally decluttered and this is the only social media that I still have. From a business perspective, I could see if I needed to diversify and you know be on another platform as well. But for now, I'm totally happy with just these means of communication. Moving on to the top row, top left, I just have the settings. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then I have utilities. These are applications that would replace something that I would physically have in my home. So that's a, a pretty great tip is to see what your technology can do for you. If there's anything that your phone can perform as opposed to having something physical in your house, maybe you can declutter that or not purchase it in the first place. And maybe your phone can act as your calculator or your camera or your alarm clock. Heading down to the second row, this one's a bit of a catch-all. We have Google Maps and weather. I just like having those in an app form so I can quickly check you know, how I need to dress for the day or where I'm going. And then I have the app store, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then finally, I have my digital wallet. I touched on this in my what's in my bag video. I'll link it either here or here. But I don't carry around any physical rewards cards or benefit programs. They are all here and I only have three. So I have Air Miles, which is linked to my MasterCard. I have Optimum, which is for our local grocery store and drugstore, which is fantastic. And then I have Sephora because I'm a beauty lover. So yeah, these are the only three that I have on my cell phone. And then this next row is a little bit of entertainment to start. We have the music app. 
at the phase of life that I'm in right now, I wanted to cancel all my subscriptions and that included Apple Music. And instead of having a subscription service, I wanted to download and purchase albums in and of themselves. So I'm going to slowly work on curating a digital collection of some music that I really love. And I do much prefer having music digitally as opposed to any physical form like records or CDs or even having a whole other device like an iPod, even though that's digital, I much prefer to have it just on this simple application right here. And then the next one there was photos. And I have finally created a system that works for me for photos. So what I do is every single month I'll go through my photos and let's say I took like 10 of the same picture at Disney World, 20 if we're being honest. I will chop that down to like my favorite photo or my two favorite photos and I will delete everything else. So I go through my photos every single month and then on the 1st of January, I will transfer the year's photos onto an external storage device. You could store on the cloud, but I'm right now, like I said, not doing subscription services. So I much prefer this physical form of a storage device. And now my photos are neat and organized and it really doesn't take me long at all. And that system is in place and it's working for me. Next up, I have my mail app. And actually I only have this app for business purposes or else I wouldn't have it in an application. But similarly with my mail, I go through every month, I delete emails I don't need anymore. And then at the end of the year, I will go through with a fine tooth comb and delete anything I missed or I just no longer need. So that's how I keep my mail really, really clear and my inbox always at zero. And remember when I told you that story time? Um, yeah, I was the person with multiple emails and I'm not kidding, I had probably 10,000 unread emails in each inbox. It was uh, so frustrating to actually go through, but I now know that I will never do that again. And when I mean that my inbox is always at zero, it's at zero. It's either flagged if I need to deal with it later or it gets deleted on that monthly cycle. And then the final one in that row is my Safari browser, which again is self-explanatory, but I have another tip for you guys. So instead of having a million apps for absolutely everything, try going through your web browser instead. For example, I got into a really bad habit of checking my financial information and my bank account way too frequently on the app. So instead of keeping that app, I actually deleted it. And instead, when I need to check my banking, I now go through the web browser. Just that one extra step is enough deterrence for me to not repetitively check something. So if you can, just go through the web browser and try not to have the app or try a period where you delete the app and see how it goes. The next row is what I call my little productivity row. And ooh, this is, <laughs> this is an essential one. I have my documents app and my drive, my Google Drive. Both of those have some documents that I want an electronic copy of. And then, oh, the big guns. Okay, Google Calendar and my notes app. I am not the person that's going to remember what my appointment was or that I had a call with a friend or sometimes even birthdays. Like, I just don't have a good memory and I get so lost and I never used to use a calendar and I would forget things and get embarrassed. And now I use Google Calendar for everything that has a time slot. It is essential in keeping my life organized and I don't know what I would do without Google Calendar. And because I have my phone on me probably more often than any device, it's the best way to get that information into Google Calendar as soon as I make a commitment. And then everything else I've got to do, but that doesn't have a set time goes into my notes. I am a list person through and through. So I have a running to do list. I have a running to get list. I have a running grocery list and a few others that again are absolutely essential. I would forget all of these things and Unless I say, okay, we need to pick up this, that, and the other thing, and it goes directly on my notes app, I'm not going to remember. So I find that application very handy and I feel so much more organized by having my lists right on my phone. And this final row here, okay, this is the find your iPhone and the health app. Um, as you can see, 
I can't delete them. I wish I could, but there's no X at the top when they wiggle, um, so I can't get rid of them. Find your phone, sure, you know, that might be helpful, but I don't want that on all the time, and I have quite literally never lost a technology device, so I don't feel like it's something that I really need. And then the health app. The health app was frustrating because it was recording a bunch of information about me, but I'm not always on my phone. I don't always have my phone near me. So it was a completely inaccurate picture, and it was picking up all this information about my health that I didn't want it to. So I had to go through that app and delete all of its data. But even after that was done and I like totally shut that app off, I can't delete it, which is frustrating. I think it's because I have such an old phone. I'm pretty sure in the newer models, you can delete those applications, but you know, they're here. They're just a little bit of an eyesore, but ultimately they're not causing any problems. So no big deal. But this does bring me to another tip. So when you click on a device and hold it um, and you know, they do their little wiggle and you click an X because you wanna get rid of that application. Sometimes that's not good enough. Sometimes you have to delete all the app's information first. Sometimes you need to close out accounts fully. Sometimes you need to uninstall the app. So make sure to do your research and don't just think that by clicking that X, you're done because that digital clutter still exists. It's just not staring at you in the face anymore. And with that last little tidbit, that is it. That is my entire phone. You guys got a lot of personal information, maybe a little bit more than you bargained for, but that is every single thing that is on my beautiful, gorgeous iPhone 6. So that means that we are moving on to the Mac Daddy, the literal Mac Daddy, the MacBook Air M1. What does M1 mean? I'm not sure. I think it's the new chip in these devices, but I'm not 100% sure. So this laptop also comes with a story. It's funny, all my devices seem to come with a story. Now this is where I took, you know, minimalism, well, not necessarily minimalism, but frugality too far. I purchased a refurbished laptop from like 2014 or 2015. It was very, very old and it was like $200. And I expected quality. You're not going to get a quality laptop at $200 but it actually was broken. So when I got it, it was like sideways. So when I was watching my YouTube videos, it was all sideways and disoriented. It was very, very odd. So I was lucky because I was able to return that laptop. But then the lesson came when I sat down with my husband and he said, you're purchasing this laptop to pursue a creative endeavor, which is YouTube. You deserve a good laptop. Like you deserve something that actually works. So we purchased a new MacBook Air and I am thrilled. I haven't had a functioning laptop in so long, you guys, since university. I first of all, haven't had a laptop in years. And second of all, the one I had before this was just, awful quality. You could barely open up a web browser. So even the fact that we purchased this laptop and that I own this, this is really, really special. And yes, I did purchase this laptop primarily for YouTube and to edit, but it has also served a lot of other functions, especially as my phone gets older and older and can't do quite as much as it used to. All right, let's see what's on this gal, shall we? First thing to note is I have a nice calming background photo. That's definitely a must for me. This is actually a photo I took on a road trip with my husband a few weeks ago. So good memories and it's nice and calming when I open my laptop. And then the second thing you might notice are these, you know, photos and video clips along the side. That is reserved for projects that I am currently working on. So those are actually little video clips and photos for this video right here, my minimal tech collection. So anything that I'm currently working on goes on my desktop right over there. And now let's get into the applications, which are down here at the bottom. Up first, I have the finder. That one's pretty self-explanatory. That's just where you house all your documents. But what I will say about the Finder is if you go into applications on the sidebar, 
There might be some applications that you find you can delete. Obviously, you can't delete all of them. Some of them are necessary to keep your computer functioning properly, but there might be some that are running in the background that you didn't even know were downloaded, and you can delete those ones off of your computer. And as for those files in the Finder, which includes these YouTube videos and my thumbnails, I also have a physical storage device that I pop those on. I haven't yet found the perfect system. I'm still new to YouTube, so I don't quite have the rhythm down, but I think it's gonna be every few months, potentially quarterly, that I go through all my documents on my Finder and get them on this external hard drive. So this is the storage system that I prefer for all my stuff on my laptop. And then the second and third are actually web browsers. So you might be saying, okay, lady, you're a minimalist and you said you like the Safari browser. Why do you have two web browsers? Um, so I was watching a YouTuber I love. Her name's Katherine Manning, and she told me about TubeBuddy. And I really like TubeBuddy. It's been a fascinating tool and uh, it's only compatible with Google Chrome. So not ready to get rid of Safari yet. And I really like TubeBuddy, so I have two web browsers. The next one up is iMovie. That's for work. That's where I edit these beautiful YouTube videos. And I love iMovie. I can't believe that it's a free application. I feel very grateful to be able to use it. So that one's definitely a work-focused application. And next up is actually another work-focused application, and that's my photos. Now, on the one hand, it's there because it's so much easier to put your photos onto an external, like physical storage device from your laptop than from your cell phone. But it's also there because I actually edit my thumbnails in photos. So that's another work application that I have on my computer. And I like to keep my laptop for work and my cell phone for more social use. Um, but like I said, I, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect minimalist. And I actually have two social applications here. So I have both my FaceTime and messaging. I do have them for particular reasons. Number one, remember when I said my phone was old? Turns out FaceTime isn't working while I'm traveling on my phone, but it's working on my laptop. Don't know why. Don't know how, but that's why my FaceTime is on my laptop so I can contact my friends and family. And then messages. When me and my friends are in the same city, we write novels. But again, I'm traveling in a different country. So imagine the novels that we are now writing to each other. They have like a beginning, middle, and end. So sometimes I don't wanna use my tiny little cell phone to type out these responses. I need it to be more fleshed out. And that's why I use my laptop sometimes to text my friends back. When my husband and I eventually come home for our travels, I think those are two applications that I would delete from my laptop and keep on my cell phone. And then last up is the trash, okay? I put things in the trash right away. If I know that I'm not gonna be using a certain clip or a photo or it's done or I've created a further edited version of something, it is going to the trash. Um, I don't delete my trash right away. It stays there for a few days. That way, if I need to pull something out of the trash, I can, but everything goes to the trash as quickly as possible and that really helps to eliminate that digital clutter. And with my trash talk being done, that is it. That concludes what is on my M1 MacBook Air. So those are my three devices. I really love having all three in my life. It's the perfect balance for me. So I hope this video inspired you guys to think a little bit differently about the devices that you do have. See if you can curate a smaller device collection or just not purchase a device that you might've had on your wish list. And secondly, I hope this video inspired you to address your digital clutter. I feel like it's that little something in the back of your mind that if you don't look at it and you don't see it, oh, it's no big deal. But once you dive into your digital clutter, it's a lot and it can be overwhelming. So I encourage you to just get started or if you're started already, to get those systems in place and maintain them so you can have an organized digital life. 
So that is going to be it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed my tech collection. I hope you enjoyed what's on my iPhone, what's on my laptop. And thank you so, so much for coming on this journey with me. If you like this video, give it a like. If you like me, if you like my content in general, consider subscribing. Thanks everyone. And I really hope to see you in my next video. Bye.